What's going on guys? It is Shmeet back here with another video because I forgot I even made this video, my 2020 NBA mock draft. I believe this was my first ever NBA related video as before I did NBA content and Charlie Horner content, I mainly focused on vlogging. Um, so if you go to my oldest video, you can see like all the vlogs I did, but this was the step in the right direction as my channel just grew over time and now we are six or seven subscribers away from 500 subscribers, which I'm coming out with a 500 subscriber special. All my reactions, the funny moments, the depressing moments, the uh, the shocking moments throughout the year, every game I reacted to, I made into a compilation. So uh, subscribe if you are new. But let's get right into the mock draft. Hello, everyone. In my Charlotte, or in my you dorm room have, uh, in Charlotte. Yes, four <laughs> and Black Ops. Anyways. Today we're gonna make our prediction for the 2020 um, NBA draft, which I'm recording this at exactly two o'clock Wednesday, November 18th. Draft is in a little over five hours, and we're gonna try to predict the first 10 picks. As of right now, there isn't any major trades in the top 10. There's been rumors that uh, the Warriors want to trade down the Bulls in exchange for Wendell Carter. It would just swap picks. That, that was probably good that the Warriors did not do that <laughs> because I, I think James Wiseman looks better than Wendell Carter uh, so far. That isn't confirmed. So in this uh, mock draft, I'm just going to talk about, you know, no trades and just try to predict the top 10. All right, so for my number one pick, I do have Anthony Edwards out of Georgia as a 6'5", 225 shooting guard. I think he fits way better than LaMelo Ball does at number one. for. Oh, God. I, I, I referenced this in a couple of my videos, but I was not high on LaMelo at all coming out of college. <laughs> That's, oh, God. The Timberwolves. Uh, this is assuming that they don't trade down in the draft or get another asset in return for number one. Maybe they should have traded down. Maybe they shouldn't have uh, taken Anthony Edwards. But uh, I think he'll be a good player for them going forward. Uh, question is if they get a good draft pick in this round. Uh, that's really the main question. Um, I just think he's a better all-around player than LaMelo is. LaMelo may have a higher ceiling. Oh, God. I called Anthony Edwards a better, like, oh all-around player than LaMelo. Oh. But as a pick um, for number one, I think Anthony Edwards is um, a very good number one oh, pick. Oh, God. And as a duo with D'Angelo Russell, I think he just fits way better than um, LaMelo Ball would. Moving on to the second overall pick. This is a pretty oh, easy pick. God. It's uh, the Golden State Warriors. Being James Wiseman out of Memphis. As a 7-1 center, this is exactly what the Warriors need to really stay relevant. Um, they have Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins if they don't use him to trade down. I think uh, Clay's injury came out like a draft, day after I made this video because it, it was on draft night, night right? Center, not only on the defensive end to grab rebounds when Draymond isn't doing his best, but also just to catch lobs from Clay and Steph. Number three, I have my Charlotte Hornets taking LaMelo Ball. It just makes sense. You know, he's a number one, number two pick in some people's drafts. I, I have heard rumors that Michael Jordan uh, gave the green light to the organization draft the LaMelo Ball, so I think this is a pretty easy pick. Number four. Okay, I, okay. I was, I didn't really go into much of what I liked about him. Uh, that, was a, that was a pretty good take, I guess. We got the first three picks right, which... In hindsight, wasn't that hard, but uh, yeah. Selecting Denny Ab Ag All right, this is my first wrong one, because um, I did not see Patrick Williams going four. I don't think many people did. I don't think many people expected him to be this good as a rookie as well. He was uh, probably a top six rookie this year, so yeah. D Aviha. I don't know much about him. He's apparently <laughs> six nine, two twenty. Uh, this is another positional pick instead of just the best player available in my opinion. Um, I have them picking Denny because uh, they really they don't really need a specific position a lot, but where they do need it is the forward position and I think Denny would replace that hole again. And then Patrick Williams replaced that forward position instead of Denny. So kind of right that they needed to uh, beef up that, that for the power forward spot, but uh, yeah. And I don't know much about him. He is 
foreign. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce the team he was <laughs> from, but I mean, he's 6'9", he can shoot it. I've seen videos of him, you'll see a video of him right now shooting, and I think this is a good pick over, you know, an Obi Toppin, which they already have Wendell Carter if they don't trade him away. And yeah, that's pick four. Then for pick five, as previously mentioned, we do have Obi Toppin. As a 6'9", 220 forward, I think he's a good replacement for the eventual trade of Kevin Love. And he can bring some life back to the... I think the Cavs are happy in picking Isaac Okoro. Although he didn't have the greatest season offensively, he showed potential defensively. And Obi Toppin, oh, I was really high on him. I was really high on him. Uh, and he just hasn't panned out. I thought he would be more ready for the NBA. Being a, a, you know, how old is he? I think he's 22 years old. I thought he'd be more ready for the NBA. I don't know. Cleveland Cavaliers after their championship a couple years ago. Then for the sixth pick, the Atlanta Hawks, in my opinion, will select Isaac Coro out of Auburn. I've seen a Coro land in multiple places um, in NBA mock drafts, falling all the way to 12 in some of the mock drafts. But in my mo in my mock draft, I have him going number. Two. Man, my. Like this was my first my like camera pre I was I'm I'm not even looking at the camera at all this video. This is wow. Man. But Isaac Okoro, um Atlanta Hawks. That would be fine for them if they did pick Isaac Okoro. I don't like double O, Oneka Kongu hasn't played too much for them. He had like a twenty point game near the end of the season, but regardless, I, I don't know. I don't know. Six. For the Hawks, it just makes sense to get a defensive uh, forward who's 6'6". Six, six, what is that, pick six? Positions, like a 3 and deep type of player. For pick seven, I have the Detroit Pistons selecting Oneka Okongu out of USC. I mean, they did pick pick up uh, Stewart later in the first round. So that was their center that they picked. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I think this is a great pick for the Pistons if Christian would I mean, Killian Hayes, uh, oh God, don't even get me started about Killian Hayes. Paint and to really be a staple in your defense as well. Um, Onaka Okongu, in my eyes, has a higher ceiling than uh, someone like James Wiseman because he's a typical... That's a hot take. Double O is better than James Wiseman. I guess we'll have to see. They, they both have been pretty... Pretty similar, I'd Five say. In today's NBA, while Wiseman, although he is better at some attributes, hasn't really shown his ability to stretch the floor as Double O has. Pick eight in this somewhat true. draft. I have New York Knicks selecting Tyrese Halliburton for the next. Man, I told you guys. I referenced this in a couple videos. I was super high on Tyrese Halliburton. I felt bad even putting him at what was this eight pick, the eighth pick. Man, if the Knicks got Tyrese Halliburton, oh, man, they would have been so much better this year. Uh, it's pretty plain and simple. Um, they really need. I don't even think they'd have to make the trade for D Rose in midseason because they would have that point guard. guard in today's NBA. Um, and Tyrese being 6'5", 180, he is a little lengthy, but if he can bulk up, I think he'll be a great top ten pick for the Knicks. Pick number nine, I have the Wizards selecting Patrick Williams out of Florida State. Patrick Williams, I really haven't heard about till this week as he yeah. rose in uh, mock drafts quite a bit. Uh, he's been described as a Kawhi Leonard type of guy in a scouting report. Uh, he's 6'8", 225. For the Wizards, I don't think they really need a superstar or future all-star in this year's draft. They just need someone that can put up, you know, a consistent 9, 10 points a game and really be a good... I'll have to look at Denny Adia's stat line for the Wizards if he did put up that, those numbers. He's a 3-and-D type of player, and I think Patrick Williams uh, does most of that. For pick 10, I was going to have the Phoenix Suns select Aaron Nesmith, but considering they did just trade for Chris Paul, I'm going to have them selecting Devin Vassell. I chose this because... Man, Phoenix Suns, if you guys need someone in your front office to tell you not to pick Jalen Smith, a player I've never heard about who is wearing goggles, who has not played a single minute for them this season, let me know. Let me know because you guys couldn't got could have gotten Devin Vassell, you know? And then I had Aaron Neesmith lined up. Two rookies that made an impact for the Spurs and the, and the Celtics, respectfully. But come on, man. Get me in your front office. I can make your team better. 
because Vassell can really run the two spot better than I think Aaron Nesmith can. They're both 6'6", but I think Vassell is a better overall pick, the better 3 and D type of player. And he okay. really reminds me of uh, Mikel Bridges, who they took um, in a couple of drafts. Oh, that's not a that's not a terrible comparison. Obviously, Vassell isn't as great defensively as uh, Mikel Bridges, but yeah. Go as well. So yeah, that is my top ten. All right. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I like my takes were. Um. I, and yeah, subscribe, like, all that jazz. I'll see you guys later.